All right. So we've got this equation. Average velocity is just displacement over time, right? Okay, so what is what is displacement in terms of final position and initial position? Because what our goal is here, we'd like to come up with some equations that can predict, we can either write them in terms of displacement or final position. Okay, we're going to come up with, with a new, with our first full-fledged kinematics equation. Okay, and it just comes from this definition. It's really simple. But what is delta x? Right. It's displacement, good. Okay, t is not a vector, obviously, right? Uh, so, it's displacement. What's the definition of displacement? Final. Okay, so it's x final minus x initial, right? In our text, in the online textbook, they actually write the subscript f for x final, which is fine. But in most books, you would just assume that if you have an x without a subscript, then that's the x you're looking for, right? That's x after you started the stopwatch, so it's x final. So another way to write that would just be like this. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and write it this way. It means the same thing, though, right? Okay, so if that's what delta x equals, then what if I take this equation up here and let's let's multiply each side through by delta t to clear the fraction, right? Would you agree then I just end up getting delta x equals v bar t, delta t? Right? So average velocity times time. And then if I write this as x minus x naught equals average velocity times time, if I add the x naught to the other side, we end up with our first kinematics equation. Final position equals initial position plus average velocity times time. And once again, delta t, if we're starting the stopwatch at zero, which why wouldn't we, right? Delta t is really just t, isn't it? Everybody see that? If delta t equals t minus t naught, well, what t naught is kind of a, that's kind of a dumb thing to write, because the naught means at time zero. So what's the time at time zero? Zero. So t minus zero, it's just t. We don't really need to call it delta t. We can't. They mean the same thing. But we can just write this as initial position plus average velocity times time. So there, there's a kinematics equation. Okay. That allows us to do things like, here, let me give you a sample problem. Try using that here. Well, I'm just going to make one up and see if these are not very good. Okay, so... So how about this? Let's say we've got a car... Let's say a car starts from rest and accelerates uniformly to, oh, actually, there was a good one. Hang on. There was a good one here. Let's do this one. Uh, 
All those all want us to do a little bit more than I want to. Ah, okay. Yeah, never mind. I'll make one up. Okay, let's say a car accel accelerates uniformly from rest up to a velocity of 40 meters per second over a time period of five seconds. How far did it travel? Let me write that down. I'll breathe. Okay. far as it travel, okay? So we've got our new fancy equation. Okay, when we're doing these kinematics problems, what we want to do is we, we always want to read the question and identify the stuff that's given to us, either directly or indirectly, okay? So what can you tell me here? Okay, time is five seconds. So there's one thing we know, right? We're interested in the snapshot, so we're going to run our camera, our video camera, for five seconds, and then the frame at five seconds, right, is what we're interested in. So t equals five seconds. Okay. What else? Final velocity. Okay, yeah. Now here's some other stuff. Now pretty soon we're going to come up with some other kinematics equations, and it, you might think that they fit this better in a way because they're telling us that. The initial velocity, so we'll write it like that, is zero, right? And the final velocity is 40 meters per second, right? Or I guess I should use the right abbreviations here. So it's just m divided by s meters per second, okay? I don't see any place in our equation up here, though, for initial and final velocity. Do you? Not directly. Look at the stuff that we would have to plug in. If we're trying to, we want to know how far does it travel. So the question that we're asking for is what is x, right? Okay. Or maybe we're asking for displacement. Either or. Okay. By the way, do you see the dispersed equation? If I wanted to rewrite this in terms of displacement, if I subtract x naught to the other side, what is x minus x naught? Final position minus initial position? Displacement. So I could, if I wanted to, just write this as displacement equals v bar t, average velocity times time. Either way. But what's the stuff I need to be able to plug in? I need to be able to plug in, if I want to plug in initial position, what is that assumed to be? Zero, isn't it? In the context of this problem, it's starting from rest. Well, we're going we're to measure it from where it starts, how far it traveled, right? So we could say the initial position is, is zero if we want to, or we could just calculate displacement. Same thing. But we don't have this V bar. Well, could we find V bar? What does it mean? V bar is an average. What's the average? How do you average numbers? Add them and divide by two, right? Two numbers. Okay, so if the car is uniformly accelerating, I forgot to write down the word uniformly accelerating, what can we assume about these speeds? Well, they're changing regularly, right? So if over that five second interval, it's starting from rest and ending at 40, what's its average speed? 20, right? 40 divided by two, everybody agree? Okay, so we could combine these two pieces of information and say, okay, V bar equals 20 meters per second, and now we've got everything we need, don't we? Right? Now we can take our equation up here, either one of these, let's take the top one, I guess, and we get X equals zero plus V bar is 
20 meters per second times t, which is 5 seconds. And what do we get? Well, 20 times 5 is 100, right? The units work out. I get meters per second times seconds, so the seconds cancel, right? And we end up with 100 meters, right? We agree? Okay. Uh, let's say that, let me, while we're at it, let's review our conversation the other day about sig figs. So what if I write it like that? How many sig figs are in time? Two. How many in velocity? Assuming the zero is measured. Two. So V bar then, and that's zeros as many as you want, right? It's, it's at rest, so we're going to count that one. It's infinitely many sig figs if we want to, right? Uh, so we have two sig figs. Uh, so when we do our calculation, then we would get to keep the full 100 meters, right? Okay, make sense? Does this seem a little weird? Let's go back to our motion diagrams from yesterday. What did, I want to show you something really cool about this, okay? So if we look at a, let's look at a position time graph and a velocity time graph, how about it? Okay. Come back to this. So here's position versus time and velocity versus time. Okay, let's say that we are traveling along at constant velocity, and let's put some units on this. Okay, if we're gonna if we're gonna move along at a constant velocity of 20 meters per second, just like in our last example for five seconds, what is this graph gonna look like? So I'm gonna be starting at rest, and let's just say we're moving at constant velocity this time instead of accelerating. If I move at constant velocity of 20 meters per second for five seconds, how far did I travel? Well, we just calculated that. 100 meters, right? Okay. So these are seconds, right? This is going to be a sloped line. What's the slope of the line? What's it going to be if, if this is our picture? But remember, the slope of a position time graph is equal to velocity, right? So 20, right? So the slope of this line equals 20, right? And so that means I'm going to end up at a point up here with coordinates 5 seconds, 100 meters, right? Everybody agree? Okay. What's it look like from a velocity time graph perspective? Straight line. Good. Okay. Here are my five seconds, and let's say we're going to go by tens. If I'm moving at 20 meters per second, what's that graph look like? Horizontal, horizontal line. Okay, so I've got a horizontal line here for five seconds. Okay. Can anybody find the answer was we traveled 100 meters, right, which we got from the value of the function, the position function, right? Can anybody extract that same 100 meters from this bottom graph? Where do you get it? Ah, yeah, look at this. How about this? So we've got five seconds. So if I think of the area of this rectangle, which in calculus we'll call the area under a curve, so the area underneath the velocity graph, look what we get. We get a rectangle with a height of 20 and a width of 5. You suppose that's an accident? It is not. The area under a velocity time graph is equal to displacement. Pretty cool, right? And we could even do, let's go back to an example without cars. We'll use like my walking speeds up here and show how this really works well. Uh, let's take an example where I'm going to do this. So I'm going to start here at zero meters, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to 
do something that's physically impossible. Okay, I'm going to walk out here at a constant speed of 2 meters per second for 2 seconds, and then I'm going to turn around and without just instantaneously start walking the other direction at 1 meter per second for 2 more seconds. Okay, so I go 1,001, 1,002, I bounce, and 1,001, 1,002. See what I'm saying? I'm walking that way for two seconds at two meters per second. Bounce back this way one meter per second for two seconds. Let's take that in pieces. What does that graph look like? What does my forward motion look like on, on a velocity time graph? What's it look like? Yes. Is it a step function? It's going to be a step function. Yeah, it's going to be. It's going to look a little strange, but would you agree that uh, it did? We said I walked forward at two meters per second. So there's my velocity, two meters per second for two seconds, right? So I'm going to do that, right? Now this is physically impossible because it would require it would rip me apart if I actually did this. There'd be infinite acceleration. But if I instantaneously were able to bounce back at one meter per second then wouldn't I jump down? I'm now going in the negative direction. So my velocity is negative 1. Everybody agree? So I'm going to go there, out to there. Now in calculus, we'll talk about how that would have to be, have to do something like that, wouldn't I? We'll get there later, though. A combination of calculus and some physics. We'll, but that's not important. Let's, let's add up the areas under these curves. Okay, let's, first of all, where do I end up? You guys can do this. You can do this. If I, I'm walking out two meters per second for two seconds, how far do I go in the positive direction? Four meters, right? Okay. And then I bounce back one meter per second for two seconds. So I go backwards two, so my displacement ends up being two, right? Okay. Look what happens. What's the area under the curve for the first part of my motion? Four, right? Two meters per second for two meters gives me four meters. What's the area under the curve for the second part? Two, but it's below the curve, right? The y value is negative. So it's actually negative two meters, right? Because I've got a negative uh, velocity times a positive speed. And so this is something we're going to find in calculus, too. Those are in calculus. Areas of curves under the line are considered to be negative. So then what is my net, if I add all this up, What's my net area? Two. Positive 4 and negative 2 is positive 2. It still works, doesn't it? Right? Okay, let's go one step further with that. Let's go back to this example that we looked at. You may not have considered this at the time, but we did something pretty tricky here. Right? If we look at this equation up here, uh, we assumed average velocity, right? But our, our situation was given to us in terms of non-uniform velocity. We had acceleration, so we started slow and ended up fast, right? Let's graph the actual orange situation, and then we'll graph what we did in yellow. And I want you to compare these areas. Okay, this is a pretty good trick. So, we said that over a period of was it five seconds, right? Over a period of five seconds, we started, let's go by tens. We started at rest, so zero velocity. Five seconds later, how fast were we going? Uh, where were we going, 40? Right, we went from zero to 40 in five seconds. So then we ended up out here at five seconds. We were clear up here at 40. And this is, we'll call that 20, right? So it's right there. So here's the trajectory of our velocity time graph, what really happened, right? What's the area under that curve? How do you calculate the area of a triangle? One half base times height. So the base is 5, right? So the area is 1 half times 5 times 40. Well, half of 40 is 20 times 5 is 100, right? So we get 100. Okay, well, what did we do? 
we didn't really tell that story. We assumed, instead, we calculated the displacement by calculating an average velocity. The average velocity was 20, right? Okay, well, what does that story look like? A constant average velocity of 20 meters per second times 5 seconds gives us an area of what? 100. How about that? So without knowing it, what you did there was you did our trick we mentioned the other day. You solved and you found the solution to a harder problem by instead trading it for a different problem with the same solution. Right? Does that make sense? So when we talk about treating something with an average speed, an average velocity instead of an acceleration, what we're really doing is we're just resizing that, that area. Right? But the answers are the same. Get that? That's kind of cool that we can do that, right? Not even knowing it, you did that. All right, questions? Yes? What, did you just do with the line? what does this one mean right here? Okay, so if we go back to our picture, or back to our original problem, look what the, what, what I actually asked you, I said a car accelerates from rest to 40 meters per second in a uniformly, I should add that word. That's sort of implied. Uniformly accelerates from rest to 40 meters per second in five seconds. That picture, right? Going from a velocity of zero to a velocity of 40 in five seconds, right? So that's the picture that we draw, right? Uniformly means in a straight line, the velocity increases. So we know that displacement is the area under the curve. So we add up the area under the triangle and it's 100. How did we actually answer that question? Well, we didn't even consider the acceleration. Instead, we just said if it accelerates from 0 to 40, the average of those velocities is 20. So we'll trade accelerated motion for constant velocity motion at an average velocity, right? So we took the case where a car travels at constant speed of 20 meters per second, our average for 5 seconds. Oops. There's that picture constant speed of 20 for 5 seconds, but if I had drawn this correctly, it's pretty close, the areas would be the same, right? Okay? All right. That's good. Let's do, let's get one more kinematics equation. Let's do, so this is the one that we used. We'll have four kinematics equations that we use a lot. This is going to be number one. This we use to calculate displacement or final position, right? Let's now, let's come up with one that's very similar to this that we're going to use to calculate uh, final velocity, okay? So, what is our definition of acceleration? Average acceleration. Acceleration, okay, good. Change in velocity over change in time, right? Change in time is just T. What is the definition of change in velocity? Delta means what? It's always final minus initial, right? So that's just equal to final velocity minus initial velocity over time, right? That equals A. Well, if I want to solve for final velocity, it's pretty easy to do. Here I've got, let's pull the A over here so we can see, right? So we can just see one equation, see all this together. What are the steps in order to get V by itself? You multiply by T, right? And, and this is all, just I want you to kind of see this. If you're not in my algebra class, I want you to still see we would be talking about this stuff right now. If we're isolating, we go bottoms up, right? How many times did I draw that last year, Savannah? About a million? A lot. Right, so we go bottoms up, and so we know that first we have to undo any addition or subtraction outside of parentheses, but because all this stuff is in the numerator, there are implied parentheses there, right? So there's none of that to do. Then we're going to multiply both sides by T, which gives us V minus V naught equals A times T. I multiply each side by T, right? Now I can add the V naught over here. That's pretty quick and easy, right? We end up getting the equation final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Okay? 
Make sense? Okay. This is a little more cryptic. It's not something that's so easy to get at, but can you tell me what the analog to measuring the area under a velocity time graph would be? Because that tells us change in velocity. Or change in, sorry, <laughs> change in position. Could I come up with, what's the analog if I did the same thing to an acceleration time graph? And it, it doesn't end up being very important, but you see what it would be? Remember we said yesterday, V is to X as A is to V, right? They're parallel relationships. So the area under an acceleration time graph must be change in velocity. Yeah. We don't usually track change in velocity, though, so that's not that, it's not that important, but it would work, right? Okay. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. Let's do a problem where we need this. How about... What's that? Is that yeah, that's our second one, right? This is now our second useful kinematics equation, okay? So let's do one, let's do a problem with this. So how about... Okay, let's do this one. Uh, a bullet in a gun is accelerated from the firing chamber to the end of the barrel at an average rate of 6.2 times 10 to the fifth meters per second squared. Those units are a little weird. I, I should probably talk about units for just a second. So, acceleration, we know up here, acceleration equals change in velocity over change in time. What are the units of velocity? Okay, and the units of time? So then the units of acceleration are going to be meters per second per second, right? Makes sense, doesn't it? Acceleration is the rate at which we're changing our speed or velocity, right? So how much are we changing our velocity in meters per second every second? <coughs> okay, so that's kind of an awkward way of saying it, though. So we treat the units kind of like variables, and what do I do in math if I've got a fraction divided by a fraction? Okay. Flip and multiply, right, by the bottom. So I'm going to end up with meters per second times per seconds. And if I multiply straight across, I get meters over seconds times seconds, which is seconds squared. So our abbreviated way of writing units of acceleration are meters per second squared. What does it mean? Meters per second per second. Okay? All right. So, back to business here. So, let's do this one. There's our information, right? What's our what's the kinematics equation number two again? Final velocity equals Okay, so now let's read this and let's extract all of the information. So what are they telling us? Some of the stuff's implied, it's not given to us directly, but it's implied by the situation. Okay, initial velocity is zero. Sure. Makes sense. The bullet's at rest before it's fired, right? Okay, what else? The acceleration rate. Okay, so the acceleration they're giving us is a big number. 6.20 times 10 to the fifth. And I'm going to be lazy, which I'll do. I'm going to do what's called what physicists call suppressing the units, which is my way of not wanting to write them all the time. But as long as I'm consistent with my units, if I'm using SI or MKS units, meters, kilograms, and seconds, we don't even have the kilograms yet, would you agree that I'm always going to be calculating or inputting uh, numbers or, or 
distances or displacements are measured in meters, velocities are measured in meters per second, and accelerations are measured in meters per second squared. Now, there is some small advantage to including units because if you get the right units at the end of the problem, then you know, well, you don't know you didn't make a mistake, but if you get the wrong units, you know you did make a mistake, right? But I'm just going to do it right, okay? How's that? So there's, there's my acceleration in standard units. And what else do they give us? Time. Time. 8.10 times 10 to the minus 4 in standard units, right? And so this is an easy one. I just plug and chug, right? Plug those numbers in and see what we get. So if I pull up my calculator, Okay, we can just plug this stuff in. So I end up with V naught, which is zero. So I can just cancel that one, right? Don't need to put it in. But I get acceleration. Well, how do we do scientific notation on a, on a Texas Instruments TI-84? Second E, good. Okay, so I'll go 6.2, don't really need to put the zero for my calculation. Second E, e means times 10 to the 5 times 8.1 times 10 to the, so E negative 4 equals 502.2, okay? And that's measuring what? Yeah, good. So that's what we're trying to find, right? The velocity is 502.2. How many sig figs can I keep? Three, because I've got... In scientific notation, I've got a trailing zero, which means it's measured. Okay? Does that make sense? So three there and three there. So I've got to round this back to three sig figs. So it's 502 meters per second. Is it very slow, though? Uh, not tremendously slow, actually. That's, that's about right. That's pretty fast, actually. Meters per second. So... Let's see, that's going to be sound travels at about, that's faster than the speed of sound. Sound's about 334 meters per second. So that's actually, like most handguns wouldn't be supersonic, but that, that is. Okay. All right. <coughs> okay, how much time we got? Seven minutes. Seven minutes. Okay, see if we can do it. So we got two, well, see if we can come up with the third one. See if we can come up with the third one here. The third one is where we're going to meld the first two, and then this is a really useful one. Okay, so let's take, let's see, see if we can come up with this together, how we do this. So we've got our final one, We number two was V equals V naught plus, plus A T, right? Everybody agree? Okay, so what if I add... Let's add V naught to both sides. This doesn't seem like a weird thing to do. You'll see why in a second. If I add V naught to both sides, I get V plus V naught on the left. I'm going to get 2 V naught on the right. Right? Everybody agree? And then let's divide each side by 2. Because what does this become if I divide by 2? Average velocity. Final velocity plus initial velocity divided by 2 is average velocity, right? So this becomes V bar, right? What about over here? Well, if I split that, I end up with just plain old V naught plus 1 half AT, right? Everybody agree? Okay. Let's go back and think of our, our, go back to our first kinematics equation, which involved average velocity. What was that? Do you remember? It was for calculating position, right? Position equals what? Kinematics equation one, what do we end up with? Equals initial position 
Okay, good. Now, do you see, I want you to compare these. Once again, uh, V is to X as A is to V. You get that? These are the same, it's like you move them up one level, right? Right, if I replace these, all these V's with X's, and I replace this A with a V, I get that from, see what I'm saying? They're exactly analogous, okay. So if I solve that for V naught, what do I get? Actually, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's just, let's not solve it for V naught. Let's just leave it as V naught times T. V naught, or V bar, sorry. V bar times T equals X minus X naught, right? Everybody agree? Okay, well, I have a V bar there. What if I multiply each side through by T? So I can get a V bar T. Okay, what do I get? Well, over here I've got V bar T, which is that, right? X so position minus initial position on this side. If I distribute the T, I get V naught T plus one half A and T times T is T squared, right? Well, if I just add that, there's two things I can do here. I could either write this as displacement if I want to. These mean the same thing, right? Displacement equals initial velocity times time plus one half A T squared. Or if I subtract, or sorry, add initial position to both sides, I could write it like this. Either way, however you want to write it, that's equation three. Very useful. So think what this one does. If I'm given a situation now where it involves maybe an acceleration, an initial position, initial velocity, and a time, I can input all that stuff and solve for x. Or maybe I'm given the final position and the initial position and the acceleration and the time, and I want to solve for v naught. I could that would be my only unknown in that equation, and I could still use it, right? Let's take an example. Well, we're going to run out of time. All I want to show you here is why. Let's take another example here, like, for example. Which slide? Going down? Oh, the one I was just on? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll put all these notes online too. And I'll, I'll, I'll make you a little sheet that's got our cumulative list of physics equations too online. So you can always just print it out. Okay. You know what I might even do? Okay, I'll tell you what, let's, this is good for today. I'll put those on there. We'll, I'm going to put up, so I'll put up a, the first kinematics Moodle assignment, but you're not going to be able to do all of it. You could get started on it, right? But we'll continue with this stuff later. What we could do, Moodle has the capacity to do a collective glossary. So you guys, we could put together a physics of here if you want to, where you could just contribute. I'm not, I'm not try that. So everybody could go in and you could kind of collectively edit stuff that like, kinematics is going Or, you know, then you could have it all in one place on Moodle that you could always refer to, except maybe on some tests. Right? Except? Yeah. I might even let you do it on tests. I'm really more concerned about you being able to use the equation at all. So how's that sound? I'll see if I can set that up. I would save me a little time, too. I like that. <laughs> That's all credit.